Hi everybody, my name is Angie Moranga. You're watching Just Angie, where we have the most amazing conversations. I'm loving the way that we're doing this these days. I hope you are too. Please keep in, uh, giving us feedback, liking, subscribing, commenting. It will really help us and encourage us to keep on this journey. Today I have a guest. Um, I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. She's somebody I respect and honor very, very much. So I'm going to ask you to please look into this camera, okay. introduce yourself to my Just Angie family, and then we're going to have a conversation. All right. Hi, Just Angie family. My name is Waho Anjiko. I love Jesus very much. I am a mother to a 19-year-old, in case you're watching things. Wow. All right. He just finished his first day in university. I'm feeling myself. Anyway, I am a Ooh. mother. I am single, like single, single. Yeah. Just single, Angie family. single. Sing oh, yeah. Just <laughs> Single, single, I love it. Yes, I'm single, I'm mm. a pastor, and I'm so delighted to be here today. Oh, yeah. I am so excited <laughs> yeah. to have you here today. Mm. I've been watching you, and I've been saying, I have to have you yeah. here. I've been watching all the things that you do. So I don't even know where we start. Where do we start this journey? <laughs> um, how, where do we start this journey? Because you run this amazing ministry as well, yeah. called God's Girls Army, yes. which I really love. Yeah. And I've been watching. But I don't know, where did the journey start? Into pastorhood even? Yes. Mm. Let me just start with, mm. first I said I have a 19 year old mm -hmm. and I'm 35. Mm. So if you do your math, I got my baby when I was pretty young. Mm. Uh, when we walk, people think he's my sibling, my brother. Mm. And I want to start there because mm. during, I'm a church girl, born, raised church girl. And okay. then in my adolescent, my relationship with God became non-existent. Mm. And so I get pregnant and I have this Do you baby. know why it became non-existent? Yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I grew up very religious, loving the church, mm. uh, but at some point I felt disappointed with God. Yeah. Uh, I don't come from a very well-to-do family. Mm. I can't say we were poor, but not my well dad died when we, we were young. Mm. So grew up with my mom. Mm. And of course, uh, we went to church and I believed in God fully. And one of the things I remember believing in God fully was that he takes care of us. And so I grew up knowing that God is going to take care of me. And our school primary motto was education is the key to success. And girl wanted to succeed. Okay? Oh, man. So I was like, Hallelujah. okay, if education is the key to success, I'm succeeding. This is it. So I really did well in school. And I focused with that because as long as you study, you love God and be right, then you're going to succeed. And then I finished my primary education and I do really well. And then after that, I was not able to go to high school and everyone was, that's oh, everyone really else was going cool. because my mother could not afford it. And oh, I couldn't believe it. Wow. I was like, I prayed when mothers were going for lunch. I'd spend my time praying. I fasted when mothers were, I, I did all the right things or so I thought. I was like, God, I did everything. I did my part, but you don't seem to do yours. Mm. And so with my disappointment, my anger, my frustration, I was like, I am done. Yeah. You, they said you're faithful. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have, cannot see faith. Yeah, I cannot see faithfulness. I'm yeah. like, I can't. And I'm seeing people who at the time I used to think were evil and bad, but they <laughs> seem to be making it. I was like, okay, this thing looks like it's different. Mm. So I decided I'm done. I used to be the girl that attends church during the week, prayer meetings and everything. I just stopped. And of course, because I had a very strict parent, I ended up just being at home and I loved to read. So I started reading novels and at the time I'd be borrowing. So it would be novels, all kinds of novels. And that is when I loved about, you know, love and the fantasy mm. of it. And I was like, okay, cut the long story short. Maybe just, I'll come here and share the story mm. more because mm. there's a lot of details to mm. it. But uh, that is how God and I separate. And I get into this season of real rebellion. <laughs> yeah. And that's how... I, I mean, I get pregnant at 16 mm. and my child is born. And during that time, I'm thinking, okay, because of course I, was, I had disappointed my mom. I had disappointed myself. I was like, okay, maybe, maybe God, you know, the one who says he loves us unconditionally. Let me mm. try that. And at the time I went back to my local church and uh, back in the day, it's not so long ago, but back in the day, I think a pregnant teen girl was not a very good idea for the church, you know? No. So the acceptance I was looking for oh, was not so found they rejected in the you as well. Oh, absolutely. Actually, my peers were being told, don't hang out with that girl. If I see you, you know your best know. friends, the ones you grew up with? Yeah. They've been told, if, if I, I see, see you with that, girl. with that girl, okay? And so I got into this place of, I just felt so lost and alone. Oh. And I didn't stop going oh, to church, who? but I would not engage. And then 
I love God because somehow he knows how to reach out to us. Mm, so, of course, does. my relationship with my parents are not doing well. My family, there's just strain everywhere. Because, of course, you've let everyone down. I am trying to go back to school. I went into a day school. So life is difficult. Uh, but in the midst of the difficultness of life, I'm still trying to pursue God for myself. I'm still trying to ask, is it possible to even be forgiven? And I remember one, I might have been 17 or turning 18. One of those days I'm crying in my bedroom and like so deeply sad, I feel like my life is over. Like I can't see the future yet. I had this, I had envisioned this bright future. I was going to be global trotting, but Angie, I was supposed to be that girl, you know? Oh, wow. And I'm right there and I'm thinking my life is over. Like, and in the midst of that, I remembered in Sunday school, how this teacher who talked about so many times that God is our father. And you see, I didn't grow up with a dad. Father. And I was like, what does it mean to even have a dad? And I started to imagine if my dad was alive, maybe things would have been different. You know, I would have gone to school. I would not have been caught up with this anger and everything. And I started trying to uh, find out what would God did mean for God to be my dad. Yeah. And so I start reading my Bible and I find all these attributes about God, God the as a father, okay? yes, yes. And one of the things I really used to admire in primary school was how, you know how people, children write three names? Like for example, my English name is Lillian, so that it'd be Lillian Wahoo, maybe Jaroge, Kama, whoever. My name has always been Lillian Wahoo and Jiko, my mother's name. Really? So I used to like envy that idea of having, you know, a surname a, a that surname. is a father. Uh, I was like, okay, if God is going to be my father, does that mean I can take up his name? Does that mean oh. I can also take his last name? Oh, and wow. immediately I went to my socials and I changed my names and I was like, you know, th at the time I was Lillian Wahoo, God's girl. Oh. God's girl. I was like, if anyone, if I belong to no one, if I don't belong to my parents, because at the time, you know, they are not feeling you. If I don't belong to the church, I don't I'm have God's friends, girl. I can belong to someone. And that's how I start that's identifying so myself as God's, God's girl. girl. And I didn't even know how powerful that name was going to be because after I start calling myself as God's girl, something about my countenance changes. Because I begin to see myself, then if God is my father, then I must behave like his wow. daughter. I must begin to walk like his daughter. Hiya. And the more you're trying to find out what does it mean to be a daughter of God, you find he's the one who restores people. Oh you know, God. nothing catches him by surprise. I actually remember one of my favorite scriptures up to date is Romans 8, 28, that all things work together, together for, for good. For those who are in Christ, Christ Jesus, Jesus and are called according to his purposes. I was like, so even this, if it is all thing, it means even teenage pregnancy. Everything. It means even the all ugliness of everything. All, all things. things. Exactly. I was like, oh, then if wow. all things can work together for my good, then let me see this work out for my good. And I begin this new journey with God. A very personal journey. Wow. I, I I sort of don't, didn't have a really good relationship with the church and the church leadership, but with God, I really I felt like He has my back. Which is so amazing because even in these times today, that's what we need. We See. need a relationship with God. It's mm. okay if the church is yes. gonna be okay, but yes. if it's not, what you need mm. is I just love it because I know somebody out there is mm. watching and they've been rejected maybe by everybody yeah. else. Yeah. What is important is your relationship with God. Yes. Oh my God. And that begins now my journey so i finished from four and right there okay i'm trying to do business because i have a child i'm trying to uh see how do i ensure that my child is well provided for i'm going to church this very same church that i had been going but i'm very disconnected it i used to be that kind of girl who you know you're serving in church but since now you sit at the back but I'm, i show up and one of those days i'm going in and the pastor's daughter at the time was a friend we meet at the gate and she's like do you know there's this church that started on the other side of the road i'm like a church first let me tell you i thought when you're born in a church you should belong to that church forever forever okay? <laughs> so i was like so did you go she said she went i was like how could you go she told me and this is the pastor's but, daughter. yes i saw you went she said i went last week she told me when i went there they looked like us so because of our dress code and everything there is that i asked her what do you mean they look like us they were so ordinary people even the pastors she's like okay i don't know just go try it once if you like it, come tell me. If you don't, I'm trying to say this is how I visit this church. And truly, I, I decided, by the way, that I'm going to be as ridiculously dressed as possible. So that... <laughs> say what? <well. laughs> so if they reject you, they reject you. Ali, now, or what is yeah, the purpose uh, so that of this? So we see if this is an accepting place. Because everywhere, I mean, I know church oh. people reject people. So it's like, if they're, they're, they're going to accept me as I am. <laughs> wow. So you wore the outfit for... Let I, should, I should send you that photo later. <laughs> I 
because I have a photo, you know. So I walk with him and we're late and I decide I'm going to be fashionably walking up to, you know, the front seats, just in case. Wow. You know? <laughs> I know, right? Hi. I know. But we walk in and seemingly no one is seeing us, you know, or rather I don't seem to. Be drawing the attention yeah. and I that sit, you thought you wanted to draw. I sit and I listen in and a lady stands, her name is Pastor Eunice. And she stands and she introduces herself as a pastor. First, I had never seen a female pastor oh. looking so fly, okay? I'm like, and she stood there and she talked about God, she talked about that, and something in the inside of me lit. Oh, I was wow. like, oh my, my God. This is even possible. She was, she had it. She had what I considered to be it. Like how she spoke, how she loved wow. Jesus. And right in that moment, I felt so I can be completely who I am and still truly love the Lord. Because the conflict I had always had is, I felt like who I am does not resonate with who, who God I, is who saying you are. Who or a Christian is, or supposed, Christian to is supposed to look like. Oh, I knew wow. I loved oh. God passionately, but it felt like I was never fitting into this mold. And right there was a representation of what could be a possibility for me. Wow. And I listen in, cut a long story short, I decide to come back. And this was Nairobi Chapel Rongai. It was their second service, actually. In their the second Christian, service? Yes, their second service. Oh, wow. Well and so done, Nairobi I plug Chapel. in there. And uh, right so there. So you plug in? Yeah, uh, right there. The lady was actually the plug in pastor, like the Mizizi pastor. So she was talking about Mizizi. So I decide, oh, what is this? And she says, for you to join in. I'm like, I signed up that day. That day. Yes. Oh, and wow. it's began the beautiful journey at the time if you would have asked me would you ever become a pastor i would have laughed so hard i'd have been passed like what do you mean and i think about six seven months after that first sunday uh in by september i was joining the kinera program uh you know full-time ministry and there's a lot of story that went into that but that is how i began my pastoral journey when i was joining the kinera program i remember pastor Albo who had who kept telling me, I see it in you, I see it in you. And I kept telling him, you do not know me. If you knew my past, you would not, no, he kept saying, be it saying because that. of that, that I that think I you're think... going, you know? And I told him, okay, I'm going to do one year of this Kinara program. I'm going to give Kinara God is everything. like an internship program. Kinara is the Nairobi Chapel internship program. Okay. Uh, where young people join in, if you're mm. considering to pursue ministry, or if you just want to be uh, developed as a leader. Mm. So I joined this and I'm like, I'm going to give God one year. And see what he has in store but after one year of course i have a plan we're going to make money so that we global trot you know our plans are back <laughs> all right <laughs> and that's how i join in and i am given different what i thought i was gonna do is not what i did i joined in thinking i was going to do social justice because i'm very passionate about community social development justice, yeah i get in and the pastor then tells me you know uh the discipleship pastor at the time needed to go for maternity leave that fly pastor you know that one that got yes, me the one that, that got one. you yes they tell me you, you we you need do. someone to wow. help her because she's pregnant and i was like just the thought of being around her i was I like know. okay we, we, we can do wow. this and so i start uh being an admin for pastor unis and I really do feel like, and I must thank her if she's watching this, everything I know fundamentally I learned from that woman. That's so good. Like she well, was, done, from dress code to how you sit, to how you talk, she's hey. amazing, you know? And uh, after a while she went for maternity leave, the whole department was left to me. I thought this was going to be a temporal thing, just doing admin stuff at the back. But I apparently enjoyed it so much and I didn't even know that I was good at it. By the time she's coming back, our lead pastor at the time says, you know what, there's no need for Pastor Eunice to come back to this department. Well, who has been doing so well, we think she should take up the whole department. Cut the long story short, I didn't even realize it. That's how wow. I began to be called pastor. Yeah. And it's been 12 years. 12 years. Yes, it's been And 12. still with Nairobi Chapel, yes. Rongai. Yes. That is so amazing. I love that story. Tell me a little bit about God's Girls Army. Yes. So, in, by the way, and in chapel, although in chapel... You did um, so discipleship, and you've been through the different departments. Twelve years. Yes. Now tell me about God's Girls Army, Army, which was your surname. Yes. God's Girl. Yes. Here we go. So I am a pastor. I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. And then, wow. uh, 2019 December, I am sent out to plant a church that I wasn't even ready for, but oh well. So I go out to plant this young adults church, and then immediately we plant. It's two weeks in. COVID happens. And uh, when I was told I'm going to plant this church, I love things done excellently. So I had worked really, really hard oh, to ensure that this church is planted well. 
And so I was very excited about our plans. When COVID happened, I was so disappointed. disappointed. Because I was like, how can you set me up for failure? You know, I was feeling like, God, how can you? First, I didn't even want this thing, but my leader says I should do it. So I believe this is you calling me into it. I'm giving it everything. And then there is this COVID. wild phenomenon that I have too. And so I was disappointed, but also at the time, I was struggling with uh, personal relationships. I've had very good girlfriends growing up, like really, really good girlfriends. And I didn't understand at the time what was going on, but we seemed to be straining. So COVID has happened at a time where my relationships are not working. And now this one thing that I was working so hard, so hard to. So when everything shut down, I found myself alone, lonely, sad, and oh, disappointed wow. by God. And one of those days I'm crying and I cry a lot. I'm a very emotional Even person. Even me, me, I cry. <laughs> and by the way, the tears were. These days I don't cry as much. I used to cry. Yeah. Yeah. Cry. Yeah, I cry. I know. I cry. I cry. My, my crying has reduced, Kidogo, but I can cry. Yes. Over everything and anything. <laughs> me too. Yes. Me too. Positive, happy, uh, yes. sad, sad everything. everything. So one mm. of those nights I'm crying. I'm oh. crying and, I, and I'm crying and it's about 1 a.m. And I'm like, God, how can I be so alone? I'm a good friend. I think if you're a good friend, you deserve good friends. I don't understand what's happening with my relationships. <laughs> I'm like, also, I'm a good daughter. I've been doing, you know, I'm trying to justify to God all these things. I don't think I deserve what's happening to me. Yeah. And right then, I, I'm about to sleep, and I hear it as clear as day. And I feel like God is asking me, do you know there are others of my daughters who've never experienced what you've had for many years? <gasps> oh, I'm like, oh, 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 oh. Like, what do you mean? And right oh. then I think about it. And in my world, I didn't think there's a possibility that there's a girl who does not have a girl squad. You know, I always assumed everyone belongs to <laughs> a you girl know, squad. Because mine was loud and was, uh, eh? was loud and, and, eh? loud and engaging. You know, we, we go to vacations together. We've done life for like a decade. Like, what do you mean? And in that moment, I wondered. Uh, yeah. and so I go on my Facebook, and because I enjoy to write, I ask a question. And I can't even say that I was being very noble with this because a part of me was like, okay, maybe I can go out there, get new friends. And then these ones who are not talking to me, they can as well, <laughs> you know. So I go online and I write and I'm like, are you a Christian girl who would like to enjoy uh, good friendships with sisters who want to grow in their relationship with God, yeah. but also with one another? If you're there, I put a WhatsApp link in my head, to be honest, Pastor at the time. I thought if anyone is going to join, it's going to be about five girls at most, you know? Yeah. Because who doesn't have a friend? Who, who <laughs> would be looking for friends randomly online? Okay? So I put it out there. I said this good. I put it uh -huh. out there and I go to bed and I forget about it. I wake up the next morning. I have forgotten, but my phone is buzzing, it's buzzing, it's buzzing. Cut the long story short, that first morning, I had about 250 women in a uh. WhatsApp group. I even first goosebumps. Stop. No. Stop. You, you, you need to wait because goosebumps Stop. will happen. What? Not now. Now is not even for goosebumps. Goosebumps are coming. This 250. one. At the time. And I'm like, wait. Wait, people. Who are, what do you mean? You know? And the group is full. At the time in 2020, they could only do have, have 256. Yes. I remember. So I open another group because others are saying, our yeah. friends are, it is full also. I, so I close up. The we group. have not got 500 people. Yes. I close up the group. I'm like, what? Who, who wants 500 friends? Like, how? <laughs> so I'm you like, are looking for five. So I'm like, God, I can't look stupid before people. I must look like I have a plan. You know? <laughs> So immediately I go back there, I put up a profile, I'm like, introduction, this is how you do it. And then, and I wanted to know the profile of people who've joined. So I was like, you know, your name, what do you do, age. And when they started coming in, there were like five children and 48, a lawyer. And immediately I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Like who, how, do, what do I tell these women? I mean, these are all the people, they are families, they're married, you know all that. Uh, cut a long story short, God helps me and we start to do a study of Draw Your Circle, the book, together. Draw Your? Draw Your Circle is a, is a book, uh -huh. uh, 40 day, that uh, leads you into prayer every day. Wow. And remember the goal was, so I assumed if you read my text and followed this, it means you want to grow in your relationship mm -hmm. with God, but also with other sisters. So I immediately break out the groups into 20s. And I said, go into, wow. because how do you get to know 50, based on the profile, so we, I, I put up leaders. And I begin to train them on what they're going to do with the rest. With the 20. With the 20. And you would report back to me. And the whole COVID year, I found things for girls to do. Wow. Now, these groups, I named it God's Girl. Mm. Okay? Mm. Because that's my identity. So I was like, okay, God's Girl. And I'm telling you this story to let you know where God's Girl Army is born. 
So at the time, it's not born out of a ministry that I had envisioned. No. Not something that it's I had It's about a need plan. that you had. It's a need I had. And, and then, then it has... this voice came and said, not everybody yes. has all your girl squads and everything like you have. Yes. And has not had the lived experiences that you have had. Yes. Oh, my so God. I, and then these women have come. So we are providing a solution. Mm. So the whole COVID year, we had an amazing time of online meetings. Remember, no one is working. So it's working. But after COVID, 2021 churches reopened. Your goal is like, okay, um, I hope you all met and became friends. Life is going back to normal, even mine, you know? So I go back to do it. I, I stop everything. The, the people are there, but I'm not telling them nothing. Because me, I'm thinking, see, now everyone goes their way. Back to their lives. And, uh, I should say that my friends are now talking to me, you know? <laughs> So I'm no longer as lonely. Anyway, I go back to planting church and doing what I thought I knew. So 2021 passes, 2022 comes. But this girl keeps asking me, Pasi, but what's the plan? So I would randomly be giving them things to keep them busy. To be honest, I'm just being very vulnerable here. I'll be like, okay. So 2022, I told them, we are going to be writing letters to God. Every day, just make sure you write a letter to God as your, you know, to your father. And that's the only thing we're going to do. And then continue connecting with you. You guys can do your thing. So we start writing letters to God. And then in February, my mother gets really sick. And I write a letter to God because I was part of this moment. And I tell God I was living in an apartment and it was so hard to see my mom struggle to climb up because I'm the only girl. So I was the one hosting her. And one of those letters I tell her to God and I'm like, God, I know I will never at this point afford the kind of house I know I want, but I know you're able to. So I write my dream house and I put it down into details, the kind of furniture I want and everything. And I leave it there. A couple of months, like about three months later, I'm cutting this story because there's a lot of detail. Mm. Let me just say that I get this exact same house gifted oh. to me by a stranger. Wow. I mean, wow. I had, I had even forgotten about it because I had written, I want a four bedroom house. I want a house that has a compound. I want recliners of this type. Like I had written things that I knew at the time. I would not afford it, but I was like, God, this is it. I had said, this is going to be my son's room. Wow. This is going to be the guest room. I was like, these young people, God, they need a house where they can come and sleep over, you know? Oh my goodness, Wahoo. And then I get a call from some, someone. I, they don't even belong to the Chapel family. And it's a long story, but they end up gifting me this house. And oh, that, wow. I come back to share with the girls and they are ignited. They're like, oh my God, because I have the letter. I, I could post it to say this is a yes. letter and this is what God has done. And there seemed to now be a fresh revival. Revival and I reawakening. Know that God was trying to challenge me. I gave you these girls to steward, but yeah. you've not been doing a fantastic job. job. At it. Wow. And I was like, Lord, what do I need to do? So I start to speak to a few of my friends and I said, you know what? I, I don't, at the time, honestly, I thought I didn't like women. Because women really were not kind to me when I was younger. So it's like, I had never envisioned myself leading women. But I'm like, okay, God, because I am here, let me follow your leading. So 2022, I call a few of my friends and they tell me, we will help you launch this ministry. And we do a beautiful launch at Sarit. Wow. A few of the pastors come. Pastor Lee was one of those who came and, yeah. you know, they come and they tell me, you know, go, we, we blessed you too. Yeah. And 2023 begins in January. And I'm like, okay, God. I want to commit to this, but I don't know what to commit to. And so I say, you know, based on my schedule and my life, I don't want to commit to something I'm not able to do. Mm -hmm. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to meet women, girls online to pray once a month. And what come may, I will meet them. I w this is my commitment between me and God. You. So I tell the wow. ladies, uh, moving forward, every first Saturday of the month, we meet to pray online. Pasanji, we meet, we start January, about <coughs> four come. February Aya. 6, Aya. March 2. I just trying to tell you, instead of it getting better, it kept getting worse and worse. I'm doing graphics, I'm posting them everywhere. I'm like, come, you know. Even the ladies on the group, they're not responding. I'm like, God, I thought, I thought it was me who wasn't doing. Now I am doing, they're not coming. That's March, April, May. This is 2023. June, June, I was like, that's it. Um, okay, I don't think this is working. And I was really discouraged. But right there, one of those evenings, God reminds me, but you made a commitment. And your commitment is not based on results. You made a commitment to pray to for pray. one year. And to pray with the God. So it's not based on they coming or not. You must wow, keep pray. to it. That's amazing, Pastor And Wahoo. so I decided I'm going to keep at it. This is where your goosebumps are about to happen. So June last year, wow. uh, I am at the lowest. 
ministries had, but this ministry of these other girls are not responding. And I'm like, God. But one of those nights I say, but you know, I said I'll do this. So before I do my own graphics, I try to do a good job. But that day I was like, graphics don't even work. So I download a photo online of a black girl praying, and I'll tell you why this is important. So I just download a random photo of black girl praying, and then I'm like, God, me, I'm tired of being embarrassed by posting it on my socials where people know me, and then no one even likes or responds. So I decide in the moment, you know what I'm going to do? I heard about TikTok. I'm going to open an account there, and then I will call it God's Girl Army, and then nobody will know who is behind it because it doesn't... <laughs> Because it don't it have your face and you, your you profile. You can say, but I'm going to be faithful, okay? So I download this picture. I put my number, very little number there. And then I post it on, I open a new TikTok account. I post it there and I put up a song and I'm like, next week, because it was the last week of uh, June, meaning we're praying next week on Saturday. If you're interested to pray, you know, that's the number to reach me at. Let me tell you. I don't know why God waits for me to do things at night. And then in the morning, he surprises me. <laughs> Because I wake up the next day, and Monday is usually my Sabbath, so I'm resting. At 10, I try to open my phone. My phone cannot open. And at the time, because iPhones have drama, I'm like, what is wrong with this one? So I call my son. I'm like, hey, check for me. I don't know what's going on. And he says, mom, I think your phone is hanging. Either you're getting too many messages. I'm like, from who? We put off Wi-Fi. <laughs> Cut the long story short. Okay. Uh, June, man the last Monday of June, I received 4,000 women. I told you that 250 were not even a goosebump moment. 4,000 women, because I opened the first group, they filled up. That's when I learned that a WhatsApp group now can host 10, 1,025 people. I opened another one, 1,025. I opened until by the fourth one, because I spent the whole day doing this. And then everyone wants responses and wants responses. Now they're from different countries. And it was crazy. Wow. That day, I, I called for prayer. I didn't even know that Google Meet can only host about 250 people. People are like, oh, we are trying to join, we can't join, because they're in thousands. You know, and I wasn't even ready for what God was about to do. But I must say that between then and now, we have grown to about 17,000 in all our groups. We're in different 23 nations. We have about 300 wow. leaders who are doing a fantastic job leading in countries I've never been. They meet physically, they, and it's been amazing seeing this movement grow from, you know, what was just something I bumped into, but to being truly the divine work of God. And that's how God's girl army is born and it becomes a true army. And we are about nothing wow, else. Wow, wow, wow. 17,000 women. Now. 23 talking, nations. 23, with and me. what is it, your purpose is to pray. So. I used to pray monthly. Uh, mm, monthly? Demand arose, what do you mean? Monthly is to, <laughs> now we pray, Daily, Monday to Wednesday, and now it's no longer. You know, although it's it was me leading the prayers. No, now we've moved them. You to, have three hundred leaders, and yes. everybody else. Eh? I also now we have national leaders. We have locational leaders. Like for example, in Kenya, all the counties have leaders. They get to meet. It's it's been an amazing, amazing, amazing. So we meet to pray online, and then we meet physically. Like what you saw, what you were telling I me. I saw, saw a taboreta. Now that is our physical meeting that happens now. If, for example, this month I'll be in Eldoret, so the girls will be meeting there. So every month there's a physical meeting, even as we continue with the online. But now even girls on their own have, because the agenda for us is to grow in a relationship with God, with God and with one another. So while we do the picnics, because they allow us as we're praying, but there's also time to connect with new girlfriends. Wow. 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 You know, we're doing life together. Others are planning for pajama nights, prayer nights. Like this past Sunday, this past week, I was very proud of my Zimbabwean team. They've been doing such a fantastic job. They are meeting in hundreds and they do an amazing job. It's just been mind blowing, oh mind blowing. God. And I've learned the power of obedience. Oh my God. That sometimes when God speaks to us, he's, he may not come and say, that says the Lord. It is in the small promptings and it is, our, it is in us being faithful to what he's calling us to. Me, I just want to now sit down and weep for like one hour. That's what I need to do. But that is so, the faithfulness of God. Yeah. And even you haven't been to these countries, but I pray that you go to these countries. I will. I mm, pray amen. they begin to invite you amen. and begin to pray for you to amen. go there and just continue doing what you're awesome. doing. And you see people need, fr I can't wait to hear the testimonies even from those girls. Yes. Like their own girl squads, the power of prayer, the power of relationship, the power of community. Yes. 
I can just imagine. They have amazing stories, Mr. Angie. Oh my amazing. goodness. Yes. And because we've really run out of time. Yeah, I know. Did you did you run did you did you so do you have the church at chapel? No, of course I planted the, the younger dance church is called Activation Church. Activation, Activation Church. Activation Church is okay. a Rongai Masailoj area. Mm. Uh, my mm. primary passion before I knew about women is really young people and being able to give young people the church I didn't grow up having. Yeah, Does yeah. that make sense? Yep. Where you can come belong yeah. and find your purpose and find your voice. And it's been that one you will have to call me again. I'm calling you. <laughs> Now we have to call again because I'm already now this one I don't even know what to say now. I don't have I have no words right now. At this point, I have no words. But to say well done. Thank you. Thank you for Thank obedience you so because mm. all those people would not have been there. That voice was right. Mm. Like you have had these experiences. Yeah and no, other women have not had mm -hmm. and that response. Mm. But thank you so much. Thank May God having. bless you greatly. Amen. And I cannot wait. Now it's next activation. Yes. Next now we have to go everywhere. Yes. Yes. The counties. Come, come and tell me what's happening. Mm -hmm. You need to have a God's Girls mm -hmm. Army's conference. Mm -hmm. I agree. International Army. And Pastor Angie will be a speaker. Oh, I, yes. I was speaking. <laughs> but oh my God. Yeah. What, thank you so much. And do you know, I, you see, I didn't know that story. Yes. I've just been watching. Mm -hmm. And see, this girl, there's something about this girl. Because, you know, I pray. I pray. Mm -hmm. Who's, who needs to come on just Angie? It's mm -hmm. a prayer thing. Yeah. And God just kept telling me, this mm -hmm. one, this one has to come. Oh. This one has to come. But I'm so grateful. Okay. I'm so grateful. So and I'm one of those people who didn't have a girl squad. Here yeah. you are. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you are? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I, I, don't, I don't have those things that a girl squad. I mean, what? Yeah. I need to come and learn. I also need to come so I can find my own girl That's squad. Good. There, yes. this yes. is it. Yes. But I'm so grateful. Thank you for well me. done. Thank you. So May the Lord encourage Amen. you. May His favor continue to rest upon Amen. you. May He continue to propel you. And well done for obedience. Amen. Well Amen. done for obedience. Oh my God. And I love the fact that you chose the name God's girl, mm. and it became it became He's your father. Yes. And we this is evidence yes. of that He's your mm. father. God bless you quickly. Thank you. Thank wow. You so I hope much. you've enjoyed that. Yani, if you didn't enjoy that, we can't help you. I don't know what to do with you. Find out if you're a girl out there and you have no one to be with. Mm -hmm. You need a community. You need mm -hmm. to grow with God. Mm -hmm. You need to grow with each other. You need a girl squad. Mm -hmm. Please find her. We're going to put all her mm -hmm. social media handles and everything about her there. Join it and, and don't stay there um, sort of in a pity party. Mm -hmm. Let's let's live life. Look sure. at how it's turned out. Sure. God bless you. Thank you.